All right. Whoa, what happened? Morris and Son Custom Baits. What's going on? What's up, Tom? Bass Guy, Gary. Yeah, well, we let everybody jump in here. It takes a few minutes to get everybody going here. Still showing zero on the counter here, so we'll find we'll figure it out here shortly. Gave it be in just a second. See, Mike Marfell was in here early. Mr. White Whale, what's up, man? Been catching some chunks over there in Indiana. Okie Outdoor, what's going on, man? Haven't seen you much here lately. Larry Lee, how's it going? Guys, as soon as Gabe gets going in here, we'll get going on with the show. Uh, we do have a guest tonight. It's a really good one, too. So I'm sure most of you guys have already seen it on social media and everything. Gabe and I have been blowing it up pretty much all day long on there. So we'll get him in here in just a few minutes. He should be a pretty good one on here. Yeah, but Monday evenings. All right. Have some folks. Weird. Rolling on. Wadded fishing. Who's that fishing guy? Who's that guy? <laughs> He, I think he used to have a YouTube channel at one time. Yeah. Then you wash uh, wash vehicles or something too. Yeah. Is that, is that what he's doing? Yeah. He worked. He worked with TJ, didn't he? Yeah. He worked with tackle donkey. A little bit here and there. Big FedEx guy. We got Stan on here. Stan's a first timer. Hey. First time <laughs> listener. First time caller. Long time listener. First time caller. Yeah. What's up, Stan? Fishing with Fitz. How's it going, man? Fishing with Fitz. Yeah, he's got a 200 subscriber giveaway. So uh, you guys haven't checked out his channel, go, go have a look at it. Yep. That's, uh, if I'm not mistaken, Bubbleville uh, Bassin's brother. That's right. That's yep. right. David's in here. What's up, David? What's up, David? So hopefully everybody had a good weekend. Okie uh, Outdoors. You see the fish that Okie Outdoor caught? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I've seen it. It was like. <laughs> maybe maybe smaller think, than that. Yeah, you're giving him a little bit on that. That's kind of impressive, actually. I mean, that's like a once that's in a lifetime a, catch. That's like splitting an arrow into. Yeah, no doubt, man. No doubt. It's pretty impressive. He threw it back too, and it, it swam off. Really? <laughs> no, I, I was gonna say, it was like, <laughs> I highly doubt it. I was like, it was speared through the it's, gut. It sunk off if it did yeah. anything. We probably got eaten. You got Isaac in here from Cumberland Pro. What's up, Isaac? Good to see you on here. Yep. And just to let you guys know, on both of our channels, if you go to the live stream. Um, I took the time today. We actually have all the Cumberland Pro lures linked down below for each one. There's a description on every single one of them with a link. You can just go and click the link. It'll take you right to it. So help you guys out there a little bit. So speaking of Cumberland Pro, did you do any fishing this weekend? I did do a little fishing this weekend. Good deal. Uh, got a video coming out, not this Friday, but the Friday after, um, which you guys will see. Uh, had about a six pounder dump me right at the boat, so that was that was mm -hmm. always nice. But well, at least you got to see it. Yeah, I got to see it. Um, it jumped. You guys will see it on camera, so it's pretty good shot. But yeah, it's a heartbreaker, man. Yeah, it happens. Yeah, I'm not I, gonna complain after catching three sevens this year. So, <laughs> well, I, I went to Kincaid uh, Sunday for a little while, and uh, I can't remember who I was talking about talking to about. Um, Swinging fish. I think it was Gary. Gary Maynard. He may be on here later. Yeah, he was on here. Okay, but he yeah. was. We were talking about. He just broke a Veritas rod trying to swing a fish. Mm -hmm. And I almost broke my rod Sunday. I had a little bit lighter rod than a lot of my rods with the same rods are just different action. I forgot which one I had, and I was throwing a um, one of the Cumberland Pro finesse football jigs, and I had one about five pounds coming up to the boat. I tried to swing it, and I just smacked him into the side of the boat because I didn't have enough butt, you know. You know, that's, that's funny you say that because stupid, uh, this Friday's video has that exact same really? scene. <laughs> God, I got lucky. My, it, yep. didn't, it didn't come off. I mean, it hit the side of the boat and it fell back in and I had to basically hand line it and yep. swing into the boat. And, I, I It's it's very easy to underestimate a fish coming up to the water. You think, you know, when they're swimming towards you just a little bit and not really fighting hard, yeah. you go to swing them and all of a sudden this head comes up and you're like, uh-oh. Yeah. So, 
Well, I was fishing. I was fishing a point out deep, and so I, I made a pretty long cast out there, and I caught him about three quarters of the way back. You know, is when I set the hook. Yeah. So he was coming. He jumped. I knew it was a decent fish, but um, you know how it gets right by the boat. Things happen really quick, and he was kind of coming. He was swimming towards me under the yep. water, and I was just trying to use his momentum. Yep. And it's a it's a medium heavy rod, but it's a kind of almost got like a moderate action, you know. And so it we just, got a lot of it just didn't get him up in the boat, man. It just, brrr, just petered out, man. I'm like, dang. So I was lucky to get that fish. Yep. See, Michael's in here and says he's got a cool handle to be part of this group. Heck yeah, man. What's up, Mikey Mike? We're getting um, ready to go on an expedition, man. Yep. I'm looking forward to that. Yep. I'm ready to get out of. Yeah, that's going to be a good time. Yeah. Good time. It's going to be a lot of fun. We got Zach on here. What's up, Zach? So got Zach, uh, Zach helped me out on my little. That little Fredertown City Lake video I did. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah he actually um, took some pictures of the lake before I was going to make that trip after work. And because I was thinking that was like a week ago, I guess, or a week and a half ago, when we'd been getting a bunch of rain. I, I figured it would be totally chocolate. So he was nice enough to drive by there on his lunch break or something and uh, That's awesome. take a few pictures. Yeah. It's always nice to have somebody in there to do that for you. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Mike's got his two ounce tungsten. <laughs> yeah, I bet. Yeah, I got some on the way, Mike. Um, they're supposed to be supposed to be here hopefully this week. Where are you guys? Wait a minute, where are you going? We're going on Pickwick. Oh, Pickwick, yeah. Oh, well, for yeah. some reason, I was thinking you guys were going to Ozarks. No, we decided not to do We did have the Ozark and Truman BFLs back to back, right. and we decided to not do those. And we're going to go to Pickwick, and then when we come back the fall, oh, so week, we're going to do those. You really are going to be punching them, yeah. Punching, okay. and, I got uh, you. Punching, and awesome. I, I don't know what all we're going to do. We're going to go down there, okay. we've got two days to figure out what's yeah. going to happen. I'm sure you hate to hear that. It'd be fun. That that lake apparently has been fishing really, really good this year. I've huh. talked to a couple of people that uh, sits on fire down there. Tom, just to let you know, if you go up to the top, you should be able to po or, uh, push that comment thing and say all comments or top comments. Make sure you put that on. Uh, it's either all or live comments. I've had that happen before, too. And it won't, it'll filter a bunch of them out. Let's see, we got Hank Snow in here. We got uh, yeah. see, see, Morrison Passen. Sun, Custom Baits. Morrison Sun, awesome, man. Uh, fishing with fits, two ounce question. Hey hats, no wait. Two ounce hey hats. Chain uh, spike. No, Chain spike. I don't know what he's saying on that. Let Toyota pay for us and give my tickets. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what the two ounce thing is. Anyway, that's wait, a big man, Toyota. Toyota pay for us and not give Ducket. I give my ducats. So is Mike a Ducket fan? I don't think he's a Ducket fan. I think Mike's a Lou's fan. He's the reason I have so much Lou's product. Well, that's kind of what I on the Lou's stuff like, a long time ago. I was going to say. Got a roller cycle in the house. Vroom, vroom. So. All right. You ready to get Mr. Trey on let's here? Let's get Mr. Trey in here, man. I'm excited. We got some questions so to ask him. And let it's it, gonna guys, be a good show. Yeah. Let us know if you get any reverb or echo on this. So we're going to try it without headphones here. What's up, man? What's going on, guys? Oh. Not much, man. Just kind of settling in. Guys, before we get started out there in YouTube land, this is your opportunity to ask this gentleman all the questions you got about reels, about custom bait. That stuff has just been kind of scratching the back of your brain for a little while. He's uh, This is what he does. So he's the guy that knows this stuff. So, uh, oh, Mike says uh, Duckett owns oh, FLW no, I, got I got what he's saying. Yeah. He's boy, boy. Boy, okay. Yeah. So what's going on, Trey, man? How are you? Pretty good, man, guys. How you guys doing? We're doing good. Um, so I got to start out by I saw your Facebook post that you did the other day where you got a, I guess it was from Tackle Warehouse. You got some new baits from Tackle Warehouse. Did you have a chance to uh, go out and try any of that stuff over the weekend? Or yeah, so I threw that new Six Sense Vega Frog. I threw the new Dual Realis Apex sixty six Square Bill. I threw the new Fighter Jig. Uh, I don't know what it's called. The, I don't know. <laughs> the cage fighter or something. Yeah. Cage fighter. And then, uh, I threw some other stuff like some egg zone lures, like the, uh, the 12 inch worm or 11 inch worm. Just checking those out just cause I've heard good things about them. Did you throw the little fuzzy tail frog? Yeah. Well, I've thrown those depths for like five or six years. Okay. Awesome frogs. I mean, that thing is super soft. It walks easy. It's got like a, like a small, like rabbit tail on the back um i use that actually up north in wisconsin for head to head so okay broad. 
So what do you think about the six inch frogs? Um, ah. it's <laughs> okay. It's a nice frog. Okay. So it's 13 bucks. Um, I think that price point is a little high for where they're made. I mean, it's, it's a made in China frog. You can get jackals, you can get, um, like the gavachos and the cares and all that stuff from Japan for nine 99. So you're getting a pretty quality frog for less money. Um, it skips well. Um, it bombs. I mean, you can bomb the cast. I mean, it casts really well. If you were throwing like a jackal gavacho, it's that same weight. It's that same size. It's like the five eighth of an ounce. It's kind of like a walking bait, like a spook style. Right. Um, it spits okay. I threw around a lot of grass, a lot of lily pads. Um, I didn't really have issues on the grass, but I had issues on the pads. If you, if you cast it out and it rolled over just a little bit, if you look at the design of the hooks, they're pointed, um, they're bent out or bent to the top. So it caught the lily pads uh, more than my buddy's mega bass pony gabbit. So it, you know, it is what it is. The hookup ratio was pretty good. So it wasn't, it wasn't too bad. Now, is that that's a, the frog you brought up here last time? No, I was just getting ready to mention that. Um, I bought some of the snag proof launch frogs. Um, yeah. I was watching Mikey Ball's video and JT Kenny, Kenny's an excellent frog salesman. So as soon as I got done watching that video, I ordered four of those suckers. And they're they're really nice. They're really, really soft, but they got that same kind of hook, that hook that's turned upward and it sticks up just a little yeah. bit above the body. And so when you're making that cast right before it starts to land, you kind of got to thumb your spool and right. you know, your belly or you're, or you're just catch grass, you know, all day long. But um, those are, those are pretty sweet frogs. I haven't got, I had one blow up on it the other day. So I haven't actually got to get into like some heavy duty, uh, you know, frog topwater situations with that to see how the hookup ratio is, but you can just tell by the way that hook's set up and how soft the body is that it's right. not going to be a problem. Um, and the, the skirt is really, really long on it. So you have to trim that sucker down. And I kind of like to feather the sides of it to, to help it walk because it's got too much skirt material. It's just kind of real stiff, but a uh, pretty good frog, I think. Yeah, I, I looked at the, those and I just didn't add them to my cart. So uh, my next tackle warehouse order, I'm sure I'll order them. Um, I just like going through frogs. I've got my five top frogs that are are definitely some of the best frogs in the market. Um that Vega frog from Six Sense is nice. I mean, I'm going to keep throwing it just to see how it holds up. Um, I've tried some other frogs that just, I mean, two or three fish and the weights pop out or bait rips and the hooks are terrible. So it's a pretty yeah. good frog right now. So what are your top frog, top five frogs? Uh, it's going to be the Depth Slither K, the Gavacho, the Jackal Kara, discontinued second generation True Tungsten frogs. And I can't think of my fifth one. Spro? No, I don't actually throw spros at all. Okay. They sink like a rock. I'm not a fan. Mm -hmm. they're, they're smaller, but I mean, if I'm going to throw that smaller frog, it's going to be the Jack Lacara and it's going to be that depth slither, okay? So I just bought some gavachos last fall. Mm -hmm. um, how, how's the hookup on those? The hookup's great on those. I mean, it still has that upward pointing hooks, but they buried them just slightly below the plastic, and their plastic's pretty soft. Um, like the Vega, I would say it's kind of like a medium range plastic. Like Depths is really soft, and then you've got like the Guggen Frog, which is like thick, thick rubber. Um, so it's kind of that mid grade. Okay, okay, because I because I uh, I know that frog that Gavacho it cash really well and it walks. It's it's probably one of the best yeah. walking frogs that I've ever had on the end of my moment. Yeah, it's awesome. That bait is phenomenal. And for 10 bucks, it's a great frog and you can get them for a little bit cheaper than that. The hooks are really sharp. It walks, it spits well. The hookup ratio has been great on it. So. Yeah, that's good to know. That's good to know. Cause I haven't, uh, I kind of got it late in the season and I, I did cast it around a little bit enough to know that. Um, I mean, it's, a, it's a total beginner's frog. I mean, as far as, yeah, if you want to buy a frog and you don't know how to walk the dog. That's that frog yeah, really. by itself. Yeah, I mean, if you want like the finesse frog, get that jackal Kara. Awesome, that's an awesome frog. Okay. It walks extremely well. It's got the belly weight centered in the belly, so it it, it pivots around the weight instead of like butt weighted. Mm -hmm. it, it walks really well as well. So you straightforward, uh, pretty much black and 
black and white frog or do you got some kind of interesting colors that you lean towards black and white yeah pretty simple i mean black white or a bluegill color maybe um if it's really clear water maybe a ghost color but typical black and white yeah same here every once in a while i'll throw in a like an orange or yellow you know that real yeah. bluegill color right but yeah i'm pretty straightforward green well, pumpkin on worms and plastics <clears throat> yeah, yeah. <laughs> we got a couple comments coming through. I'll put them up on the screen for you so you can read them here a little bit. We've got a couple questions coming through there. Uh, wake baits. Um, I've been throwing the wake bait pretty much since spring to summer, pretty much post or pre spawn, spawn, post spawn, summer. Just transition the bait colors from like shads to bluegills to going into clear water. And then going into the fall, it's going to be shed bites. So um, I've got a weight bait tied on right now that I threw yesterday. Okay. So do you have any videos available to, to see the action of that bait? Yeah. 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 So do you link it down in my YouTube channel? Yeah. Um, okay. It's linked down below. So if you guys yeah. want to check out his stuff. I've got, a bunch of videos there. I've got like a video from Kentucky Lake where I caught a bunch of fish when I was doing like the final testing of it. Okay. So what kind of gear do you recommend for throwing your weight bait? Uh, as as, uh, rod, reel, line, that kind of stuff. Six, three to one. It's typically like my spinner bait or square bill setup. So if you can throw like a medium heavy rod, seven foot, uh, you can either throw it on 15 pound, 20 pound, four carbon, or you can throw it on 30 pound braid. Either one. It just depends on what you, you prefer. Okay. I like that braid idea. It's, it's nice when you got that, you know, when you're, you're way out there on a the cast and you got that braid, that no stretch, you can yeah get a hook in that fish. Yeah. And if you use braid, you can kind of get away with a softer rod, like your square bill crankbait rod. Like I've thrown it on my uh, seven foot, like e-glass rod from, from Dobbins. So with that braid, it allows you to have a, a little more parabolic on the rod. Mm -hmm. You don't rip the, uh, the hooks out. That's right. That's right. So, um, you got another question for him before I get into yeah, there's, something else? I just want to catch up with the comments here a little bit before we get too far ahead here. Okay. Uh, this is kind of jumping in right to the reels um, with the uh, vocal bearings here. Are they universal? No, they're not. Kind, I mean, not really. Um, so, Revos are going to use three spool bearings, and the Tattoo is going to use two. Um, they're both kind of hard to install if you've never really broken the reel down um the revos you're going to need a special tool to pop the uh, the bearing off the spool and then the tattoos you got to actually crack the entire reel open to get to the bearing so that's good enough. for me it's really easy i can do it in like five minutes but <laughs> yeah you haven't done it you know right. they can lose parts i mean there's a lot of springs in there and you know a bunch of small parts that people don't like to mess with how long have you been uh, cleaning reels and stuff? Uh, what is it? 2020. I've probably been doing it since 2005. Okay. Or so. I've been doing it full time for six years, seven years. Now, is there is there a certain reel that when you get it, you're like, oh man, I don't like this reel. I don't even want to dive into this thing. Or are they all pretty similar? Um, all bait casters are really pretty similar. You know, with like your Lou's, Abu's. 13 fishing, um, even some of them like $160 cast kings now, they're all made in the same factory. So internally, they're roughly the same reel. And they just use like swap out parts and everything. Okay. That's but they're all, I mean, bait casters, I, I have no issues with. Spinning reels, I don't even like to touch them. Yeah. I, I've, I've, uh, I had a Stratic one time that I took, I broke it down. And man, I put, I guess I put something in backwards and it was never the same. And I had to send it up to Canada to have it repaired and I got it back and it's, it's still not the same. It's, yeah. It works. It's functional, but I screwed that reel up. Yeah. I mean, spinning reels are God awful to work on. They're horrible, horrible. That's why I don't own any. So. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, you throw a shaky head, right? You got to have a rod. <laughs> I do. I throw a shaky head on bait casting setups. I've got Stuff to I've got a uh, bait casting setups where I can throw down to a sixteenth or a thirty second of an ounce, so I don't really see the need for a spinning reel. Right, I understand. They do get in the way on the deck of the boat too. I like. To yeah, I mean, 
they're great for like using them for chalks for your boat if you need to <laughs> to a straight up power fisherman. Yep, that's good. A finesse power fisherman. Yep. Yeah. Got one more question before we get on with our stuff here. Johnny B was asking. Oh, what's the best condition? So the weight bait. Oh man. Pretty much anytime you want to throw like a square bill or a spinner bait, I would say. Um, yesterday was I guess partly cloudy. So I was throwing a little bit brighter one. I was throwing my GFK shad. It's got a bunch of chartreuse. It's kind of a ghost color shad to it. Um, but I was cranking that along uh, weed edges and lay downs and just catching fish up shallow. For some reason, the fish were really shallow. So, And they weren't just shallow where we were fishing. They were fishing shallow at Truman Lake. A bunch of guys were fishing a big tournament down there, and they were catching them in like 8 or 10 inches of water. Wow. It's just kind of weird when it's 85 degree water. So yeah, that and, and speaking of the water temperature, what what is when do you start going to that wake bait? Say in the spring and then when does it disappear in the fall? I would say from like 60 degrees, 58, 60 degrees in the spring, and then all the way through until 60 degrees, 58 degrees in the fall. Mm-hmm. I mean it's it's pretty much like a 2.5 square bill. You know, same kind of action to it. Um, it's a little bit wider, so yeah, I haven't thrown a wake bait a whole lot, honestly. I've thrown a lot of the the baby one minuses. Yeah, you remember those? Yeah, yeah. they're I've, loud. Yeah, they work, man. And talk yeah. about getting skinny water. They they just barely get underneath the water. Yeah, I mean the nice thing is, you know, if you're fishing a couple inches of water, they're great. I mean, it, you know, the nice thing about the wake bait is you can crank it down to like two or three feet, and then twitch it and pause it on the water, or you can just run it on top of the water and you know watch the fish destroy it. So. I bet that's a fun bite. Yeah. Like yeah. That. Especially when this water cools down. Like right now, these fish are just, I mean, they're still in summer pattern. They're going to be summer pattern for another four weeks, maybe. Yeah. Three yeah. weeks. Actually, we're talking we're about about the My local, like, it's already starting to, they're starting to move back to shallows. Are they? So that's good. I'm hoping with this, this rain that we're getting and this cool front coming in the next 10 days, it looks like. I'm hoping this water starts dropping into the 70s because, man, Yep. It's tough, isn't it? It's been hot and uh, fishing has been pretty crappy. So it's just been cool. You know, I'm waiting for these fish to start feeding up. They're, they're pretty small still or thin. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, there, was, there was a question on here. Oh, full armor bass in here. He was asking about his 13 fishing concept, Z. Um, yeah, you can oil them. I think that's the one with the bushing. So, yeah, you can just uh, drop a little bit of oil on them. It's essentially like a polymer bushing instead of using bearings i've actually swapped out those bushings for for boca bearings for guys so oil doesn't hurt just do like one drop and that's it guys take over oil and grease their stuff and it's highly annoying what kind of oil do you recommend for someone that's just going to do some at-home maintenance light stuff well, this i don't know if you can see it this is the lucas oil mm-hmm Okay. Uh, good stuff. I also have this stuff typically in stock. This is Boca's oil. This is a little bit thinner oil than the Lucas oil. They're both synthetic oils. And then grease-wise, I go uh, Daiwa Space Age Blue Grease, if you can find it, because I buy it all up. <laughs> it comes from Japan, so when they're sold out, it takes forever to get back in the States. Yeah, that's like the baby brush hogs here at the local academy. Every time I go yeah. in there, I buy everyone they have, especially yeah. right now with the pain. Or the Berkeley flatworms right now that you can't buy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You ever use any of the Batman oil? Batman? Which one? The From Shimano? Um, I've got some, I think. Um, I just haven't used it in a while. Yeah, so do you think there's any advantage to it or anything? Because I know Shimano's pretty proud of it. So. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's probably another synthetic oil. Um, another oil that I use for my bearings is uh, ZPI's oil. This is pretty expensive. This is 20 bucks. For I mean, it'll last me a while, but I go through it a ton. It's, it supposedly has micro diamonds and stuff in it, so it fills in like blemishes and metal. Oh, it's okay. awesome oil. It is awesome oil, but it's pretty expensive. Yeah. That's interesting. I bet there's... All kinds of stuff out there you can put in your reels. It's good to yeah. even through them and kind of test them all. Yeah, I've gone through a lot of stuff like hot sauces and real butters and all that stuff, but it's actually pretty I found what works. 
So here, that's a pretty good question. I've actually, I've, we've had this question on here a couple of times before. Oh, that's a great question. Yeah. That is usually due to the anti-reverse bearing, which is housed with the, uh, the main drive shaft. So your handle shaft, your handle shaft goes through the anti-reverse bearing. And so if it's too cold, that anti-reverse bearing is typically over oiled. So that oil is freezing and it's allowing that the handle to spin backwards. What you want to do is you want to take that real side plate off and you'll want to take a Q-tip and wipe the AR bearing so it is completely dry. Okay. But that's typically why they, they go backwards in the yeah, cold. We've had that, that question a couple of times. I didn't know what the deal was with it. Yep. I don't know if I've ever had mine do it, but. I mean, the simple the simple answer would have been just buy, go buy a Daiwa or Shimano, but. <laughs> Man, I've had that happen. You know, when it's jerkbait season, you got those tournaments where it's like yeah. 80 degrees in the morning. That, that's it's AR bearing. It, it just, it slips. There's nothing for it to grab on. Um, the, the collar for it to grab on. So it'll just backwards in until it catches on one of those bearings. Yeah, that's frustrating. It that's is. Frustrating. It's not because you're yeah. spool either yeah. blowing up or you'll lose fish. Yep, I've gotten to where I, I put my thumb on my spool, you know, because yeah. I know it's going to happen eventually. Yep. Got any more questions there for one? Um, let me see. Let me catch up a little bit here. Tackle junkies in the house. What's up, man? Uh, old Jim. Yeah, he was talking. He was talking quite a bit about the uh, shad a while ago. I've seen, and uh, that's. I was telling Gabe the other day we got so many bait fish in my local lake here, and like I said, my fish are actually. There's a bunch of them moving up. Really, I'm still finding them out deep too, though. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, you'll the fish will be deep, shallow all year round. So right. Uh, this was actually a pretty good one. Stephanie had. When is a black and blue color to use? Colors to use. Season. Can I get them to bite? I can't get them to bite this summer on that color. I think black and blue is the number one jig color in the country. Yeah, I. To be honest with you, I would say I've thrown more black and blue this year than I have probably the last three years combined. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It doesn't look like anything. I mean, it looks you know like if we go up north, it looks like mayflies and stuff up there. Like there's willow cats that are pretty small. They're black. Um, but yeah, black and blue is like across the board, probably the number one jig color. I think it looks like those, um, <clears throat> you know, like a goggle eye, the real, yeah. the real dark sunfish. Yep. They got that real dark top to them. Yeah. That's my theory on it. I don't know, but I think it's also just something that contrasts with the bottom. They can see it a little better, you know, yeah. especially down there deeper. Well, yeah. I mean, it doesn't lose the color, <laughs> you know, like opposed to like red line will disappear in 20 feet of water because it's right. like, a refraction light and all that kind of stuff black is pretty much black at the top and black all the way down at the bottom so right i think one of the number one reasons i've been throwing it so much this year was we've had such a hot summer we have with hardly any rain and you've seen a lot of places that have that real green tint water that real yep. dark brown water and that's that's typically why i've been throwing it so much this year you yeah, know like we've had some, nasty some horrible algae blooms yep. and just some nasty grass blooms and that, that I call it witch's hair. It kind of grows <laughs> on the rock. Uh, we pulled up a bunch yesterday, dredging it like 18 foot of water. Um, it's been pretty, uh, pretty thick this year. Yeah. We've, my local lake's got it. it. I was telling Gabe, we fished it with last year. Yeah. Yeah. Last year we fished it and it had on one bank, it had that witch's hair. And yeah. this That's year, horrible. yeah, this year it's on about 80% of the banks. Yeah. And that stuff, man, that stuff stinks. Holy cow. Yeah, it smells like sulfur. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's bad. We ran into it yesterday, and it was horrible. I mean, you're out in the middle of nowhere, and you're like, God, man, this is awful. Yeah. You think it's harder, but <laughs> can't blame him for everything, I guess. <laughs> yeah, you can't You can't get it off your bait either, you know? Like, if you're fishing no. some, some milfoil or coontail, you can snap it, and it comes off, but you think no, you're it's, it's it's like Velcro, and it just sticks to yeah. everything. It just ruins it. It's nasty. It's yeah, I did find out if you let it dry on the side of your boat on the ride home, it's it's like a frosted flame trying to get off there. Yeah. <laughs> it's like That's a big a booger, crusty man. booger. Oh, it is nasty. Yeah, it's like concrete. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> let me. I'm going to ask you a question. Uh, I was talking to Mike the other day, and he mentioned something about you doing a. You were involved in a the one on one tournament up north. Yeah. yeah. Can you talk a little bit about that? That's a new um, one for me. So what it's called head to head fishing. Um, it is out of Wisconsin right now. It is the guys that own the Real Shot Tackle Shop up in Appleton, Wisconsin. 
massive driver shop. It's huge. So they started like this pool tournament trail. And I fished up in La Crosse, Wisconsin. I've never been there. It was pool seven, eight, and nine. And there's 16 guys. And you get paired with, uh, you know, like me versus you. And eight guys fish Monday and eight guys fish Tuesday. And the winners advance to the next day on Wednesday. So I've never been there. I pre-fished. I had a buddy help me pre-fish. And we pre-fished for probably seven days, eight days. Because it is nothing like the Mississippi down here where you have like four creeks and all that kind of stuff. I mean, there's thousands of miles of islands and cuts and places to fish. It's incredible. It's beautiful up there. But, you know, it's that one-on-one format to where you're catching as many two-pounders as you possibly can, kind of like that MLF format. Okay. Um, Every guy had a camera guy in the boat for five hours. So you would have your five hours of a camera guy and, you know, promote yourself and do pretty much hopefully catch fish so you can advance to the next day. So I pre-fished and I was horrible. It was horrible. The water was really low. Um, we got stuck a few times. Thank God we didn't have to get an airboat to pay 2,500 bucks to get out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That was, yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> was really yeah. Um, but it was pretty cool. So I, I wasn't expecting anything. All these guys that fished it are local sticks. I mean, Cade's a beast up there. He's won multiple BFLs up there. Kevin, um, Kevin Herlitsky, all these guys are – They've done really well up there, Jeremiah Shaver. So I was just going in kind of just like, man, this is going to be cool. Great experience. Um, Beautiful area, just new place to fish. Ended up winning day one with one keeper for two pounds even. And I caught that with eight minutes before we had to go into Dink Fest. So I luckily got that one on a jig and then moved on to day three, four, and day five. And took second place. Wow. That's awesome. It was awesome. I beat Cade, which was like the heart. I mean, that was like the gauntlet right there. I was like slaying the dragon. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. So it was cool. I mean, the whole format was incredible. I mean, you only had five hours to fish. And having that pressure of knowing your competitor, you know, what he's catching or what he's not catching. Um, the camera guy kind of giving you details on if he's breaking down or if he's over here, you know, kind of thing. So you kind of have an idea of what's going on. So you're always, I mean, that pressure is always on you the whole time. Completely different than going in and weighing fish and like, oh, this is what I got, you know, and that's it. So it was awesome. I'm definitely doing it again. So it was fun. So so did you guys, the guy you were fishing against, did you guys both take off? Did everybody take off from the same marina or did, were you able to go to your spots? And then as um, say you started at seven o'clock, as soon as it's seven o'clock, was it lines in? Was it like that or how was it? So you could put in anywhere you wanted on pool seven, eight or nine. Okay. So that's why we were up there so long. Cause I've never fished any of it. So we pre fit pool seven, eight, nine, trying to get an idea of what pools can I stay in because you, you could lock through, but that's going to cut into your time of, You know, five hours goes by really quick. You know, you guys are used to eight hours. You know, you cut three hours off in your your day. I mean, you're it's gone. So you can put in wherever you want. We would get to my spot and I'd have like 45 or 50 minutes before we can do lines in. And so you're just sitting there waiting for them to say lines in. You know, which is killer. I mean, it was it was horrible. Because you're like, what are you gonna do for an hour? You're sitting on your boat. You're already rigged up, so you're just waiting. And then once you have that that line in at seven o'clock, then you you're done at two. So it's okay. pretty cool. So well, I I fish a. You're talking about how fast five hours are goes by, and I fish a lot of the Wednesday night tournaments here locally, and they're four right. hour tournament. And you're exactly right. It's it's gone. It, go, it goes by so quick and. If you if your first spot doesn't pan out and you got to make adjustments, you seem like I mean you can get behind really quick and you can yeah. be just kind of you can get spun out if things aren't going well and next thing you know it's you got an hour left and you're not where you needed to be and right it it goes by super super quick so I know exactly what you're talking about yeah it was bad I mean you know you're, it was tough like I mean it was really tough the fishing was horrible 
I mean, horrible. <laughs> you know, I'm used to catching fish, but you know, I'm doing this for eight days and then having a day off watching them not catch fish and then go out and catch one single keeper on the first day to advance to day two and then catch two on day two. I mean, it was terrible. I mean, so that, that, one, that one keeper was enough to, to go advance to the next day. I thought you meant you were, you, you advanced off of one keeper, like you were one keeper above the other guy. So between oh. the two guys, there was only one keeper caught. Yeah. So he zeroed and I had one two pounder, exactly two pounds. That two is tough. Day. Yeah. And then, so on day two, I had two keepers and he had none after he whacked him the day before. He had like 13 pounds the day before. Hmm. And then he zeroed when we fished, when I fished against him. So I had like five and a half or six pounds with two fish. And then almost the same thing happened on day three. Cade whacked 16 pounds on his previous match and then came in and almost zeroed. He caught one fish for 211. And I had two fish for five pounds maybe. So it's crazy how, I mean, up and down the weights were. Yeah, you're, you're, you're never really out of it. Is, is there a, was there a minimum weight? Um, if you had a, a fish that was over two pounds, two pounds and over, you could weigh. If you didn't, if no guy caught a two pounder after three hours, then that last two hours, you'd go to dink fest and you could catch as many little guys as you possibly could to advance to the next day. Oh, so they call it dink fest, huh? Yeah. So you don't go to a tie round. We just call that fishing. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, one of the guys caught like 18 fish for like 47 pounds, but they were all really tiny fish, you know? So he was just throwing like Ned rigs and catching 10 ounces. Yeah. To advance to his next round because both of them couldn't catch an actual two pound keeper. Okay. That's how hard it was up there the week that we were up there. So, so was that, was there a reason why the fishing was so tough? Could anybody put um, anything on that? Was the water dropping or I don't know anything about that up there. Yeah, so the water dropped. It was like at nine feet. And then when we got there, it was like six and a half feet. So it dropped completely out with hardly any current. They had a college, either college or high school, big tournament up there. It's like 340 boats. Wow. Massive. So you got 340 boats pre fishing and then beating the crap out of the water for another two days, three days, whatever how long it was. The week after, they had a BFL Saturday and then a Wisco event on Sunday, right before we started, and that's 110 boats in each tournament. Yeah, that pressure Plus, just... The pressure killed it. The dropping water, like, the water was at six and a half feet, which is absolutely low. Everybody's like, man, it hasn't been this low in years. So, and I'm telling you, those fish were in, like, dirt, shallow, gross uh, rice grass. I mean, it was weird. Huh. I mean, it was crazy how shallow those fish would go. You figure they go out to deep water because the water's dropping, so they want to get sucked out, but not those stupid fish. <laughs> horrible. It was the longest 12 days of fishing that I've done in a very long time. So, all right, we'll get caught back up here a little bit before our comments just run off the screen here. Uh, there was one right there. I'm just kind of cruising through this. Oh, I'll put one on the screen for you. I do. That's about, yeah. Uh, I will say Boca. That's all I'm going to say. I will not say anything about spool speed. <laughs> now that I, I, my lawyer said I can't say anything about spool speed. No. <laughs> I'll say Boca. Fit, man. Those are those are ceramic bearings. Is that right? The Boca bearings. Yeah, they're actually they're they're both ceramic bearings. They're both ceramic hybrid, but hybrid bearings it's okay. uh ceramic balls with like uh stainless steel runners or races they're both solid bearings i mean if you really want really good bearings like top of the top we're good zpis they're like 40 bucks a pair okay but bokas i sell them for like 20 bucks a pair which is steel compared to everybody else so and what's your uh what's your typical turnaround time like if somebody sends you a reel to install some bearings or just get some you know like cleaning you have a i guess uh, it depends on how busy you are but yeah like right now i've got three or four or five reels in the shop right now and i'll knock them out tomorrow morning um installing bearings for me is pretty quick 
cleaning reels. I mean, everything's pretty quick for me, but uh, you're looking 48 hours maybe, which is not bad. I mean, there's shops around here that are like six weeks. I'm like, that's crazy. I I know people can't do it for six weeks. You guys are fishing tournaments. I fish tournaments. Like, I know the deal, you know. Even in the wintertime, I'm probably maybe a week out. I mean, I'm doing it 10 hours a day, but – yeah, it's, it's busy. We, winter time, once November starts, it gets awesome in the shop. Yeah, I can imagine. I can only imagine. It's, I, it's seventy hours a week. Well, not to not to keep business away from you, but what would you say would be the number one thing to do to keep your reel in good shape? Uh, man, I would. I mean, honestly, like simple using a Q-tip just to clean like the worm gear and the outers, and just keep them oiled. Um, less is more with oil and grease. And just really just don't beat the crap out of your reels. I mean, I see a lot of reels that are just – I'm shocked that guys pay this kind of money for these reels. And I'm like, man, what are you doing? Like, I get it, but, man, it's still – it's like it's crazy. There's a lot of boat rash and stuff on them, I guess. Uh, boat rash and just completely covered in – I don't even know. Some of them just – I've had reels show up that I'll open the box up and it's like a puff of smoke. <laughs> I'm like, and you can smell that they smoke like 30 packs of cigarettes for 47. And I'm like, what are you doing with your reels? <laughs> like a genie's going to pop out of the box or something. Yeah, like, what are you doing? I mean, it's crazy. Like, it's just simple stuff. I mean, I keep reel covers on my stuff. I'm pretty anal about my stuff, but I also see what happens to reels. So, mm-hmm. yeah. I will say that's the one thing I don't really do is re- reel covers. The reel covers? Yeah. I just I use them I use them so often. Right. I mean it's I mean it's nothing for me to come home in the middle of the day on my lunch hour and go down to my pond and fish at lunch. Yeah. So I mean I'm and then I'll come home in the evening and do it too. You know, I just I use them so often. Well, I've got a rubber like a rubber mat in the bed of my truck. Um, like I fish out of a sixteen foot John boat most of the time, yeah. so my reels come in the house with me every time. So oh. I got a little I got a little area where I set all my my rods and reels up, and then. When I go to transport them, I put them in the bed of my truck. You know, it's got a, right. got a truck cover, got a rubber mat in there. Um, so they don't really get banged up too bad. But yeah, um, if you leave them in a boat, you know, in the in the rod locker and stuff, they're really rocking and rolling inside that yeah, rod locker. I, I will say, like, one of the biggest sides from, like, the garage or wherever they keep them, and they'll stick them on the deck of their boat, and then they'll drive down to the lake two hours away. And they'll go through gravel roads and all stuff, and they just get covered in road grime. Mm-hmm. And that's the absolute worst thing you can do to reels. It's horrible. Because, you're I mean, you're driving down the road, and gravel and dirt and dust and all this stuff's getting in your reels. And it's bad. I, I remember uh, there's a there's a local power plant lake. Well, Lake of, lake of Egypt. Have you heard of Lake of Egypt? Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. It's my dock lake. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Ten feet, sir. Yeah. It's ridiculous. But – we were going there. Uh, me and my buddy Jerry were going there a couple years ago, and it had just rained. And we're coming from Missouri, so we drive past the power plant there, and right. it's got all that black coal oh. suit stuff that gets all on the roads. And you were talking about leaving your rods out on the um, on the deck of the boat. His was in the back of the well. His is in his rod locker, and I was coing when that that day. I was in the back of the boat, so I had like nine rods strapped down on the front of the deck of the boat. And we get to the lake, man, and all that crap had just jumped over the side of the boat and laid down on this carpet and all my reels and my rods. It was disgusting. I mean, we had to sit there for probably like 10, 15 minutes just wiping down stuff. Well, do you treat them like old Zepco 33s, dip them in the water a few times? Like, I don't think it would have came up. Like <laughs> Use that old Illinois uh, salt water over there. And dip <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I bet there's some big fish up there right by the, the hot water discharge. I always wondered – you know how big the fish get up there because they get no pressure and they can you know they can they can just grow all year long it's like florida yeah you know, like a constant like 80 90 100 degree water temps yeah i haven't been there. i've only been there three times maybe four times cool lake it's awesome i mean there's some giants in that lake yeah it's a lot of fun grass so where do you where are you uh what's some of your favorite lakes where do you like to fish at wisconsin Wisconsin, yeah, yeah, I love Wisconsin. like this time of year. Wisconsin, it's like in the seventies all that, you know, for four months. So, um, I really grew up fishing the river, Merrimack, Mississippi, um, Kentucky Lake. Gone down there for the last twenty years. 
just because I got family that lived down there. So Kentucky's changed over time with all the pressure and the Asian carp and all that kind of stuff. But pretty much good. Have you been down there this year to Kentucky Lake? I have not. We thought about going this weekend for uh, Labor Day, but I don't think it's going to happen. Yeah, it's pretty tough down there right now. It's kind of – it's went downhill the last couple of years. But the good thing is um, they're starting to get – a pretty good – I think I think they had a successful spawn like maybe three years ago, two, three yeah. years ago. So you're starting to get a lot of 14, 15-inch fish in there. Um, I think it's starting to come back slowly. And, of course, they're getting rid of a lot of those Asian carp. You're starting to see some shad. The shad population is starting to come back. So I mean, that lake used to be incredible. I mean, six, seven years ago maybe. Yep. I mean, my biggest bag out of there is 33 pounds. Wow. And that was like March, mid-March, late March, fishing main lake points. I had a nine six largemouth and a six nine six ten smallmouth within like five minutes of each other. I mean, it's, it was incredible. Um, I took a buddy from Chicago and we probably whacked I don't know two hundred fish mm-hmm. off, the, off the same point because they just kept funneling in from the ledges and just kept moving up up to the points and feeding. Yeah, it's but, a different lake now. Oh, it's terrible. I you know between the flooding that they get every spring, the last three or four years. No grass, the Asian carp, the pressure. I mean, it's going through its cycle and it's going to get hammered. So, yeah, it'll come back. I mean, it, it'll come back. Those fish didn't disappear. They didn't die. They didn't just vanish. They're still there. They're just they move around so much now with the Asian carp push them around. Yeah, yeah, that's that's what I've heard. You know, they can't sit up on the ledges because it's yeah. it's uh, they're being bullied around by those bigger fish. They get tired of it. Yeah, and and well. And you can't see them now. It's a lot harder with your graphs to see through 2,500 Asian carp to get to the bass that sit on the bottom. Mm-hmm. So they get lost in that, you know, where your graph before, you could just pick out those little snowballs on the bottom of the, the, the ledge. It was easy to find them. But now you got those Asian carp creating that cloud above them. It's, it's made it a lot harder. Yeah. I got, I got a question for you. Um, how did you, your wake baits are on Tackle Warehouse. They are. How did how did that come about? Um, so I have done. I've worked for Omega for seven years, eight years, developing baits. I'm custom painting for them. They got their stuff in, and then I pretty much just contacted the buyer and said, "Hey, dude, let's get some weight baits in there." Sent a bunch of samples into the to the buyers there. They went and tested them and used them, and said, "Let's." Bring in your four popular standard colors, and uh, I think I've had them in Tech Warehouse for six years, maybe. They've been awesome. I mean, Tech Warehouse is dude, they're they're a great company. Yeah, that's pretty cool, man. I got a lot of baits. I'll tell you that. Yeah, and and that bait's different looking too. So it's it is. Kind of its own thing. Yeah, it's a little different than like your typical just plastic body weight bait. You know, um, you know it. Which is pretty much what it is without the uh, the skirt. I still got to put skirts and all that kind of stuff on it, but that's your typical wake bait. Um, I took our skirts and started making a bait, kind of testing to see the correct action to it, um, buoyancy, all that kind of stuff. I wanted that, you know, that hard like S turn to it, just a little bit different than uh, your standard wake bait. Yeah. So you got a certain treble hook you like to put on all your hard baits? Yeah, I use a lot of the uh, VMC. I think they're the VMC inlines. I used to get a VMC like short shank, like hard cone. Um, those came from Japan. They're just harder to get. I've been trying to get, if you've used any of the dual Reala stuff, I've been trying to get those hooks here. I've asked them many times. I, I want 10,000 of each size just to use them and sell them because they are, I think they are some of the best hooks on the market period. Awesome hooks. They're so nasty, sharp and strong, but they're just a Japanese VMC. I just, we just can't get them here. Hmm. Yeah. I'm I'm typically, I just use the, the, uh, the KVD short shanks a lot of times. KVD makes them, the mustads are great. Gamma got a great hook. Um, Those three companies are probably the best. uh, Yeah. I really like those Gamagatsu. I uh, especially on yeah. the jerk baits, the little like size sixes. They're super yeah. sticky sharp. Yeah, if you've used like uh, 
the Aaron Martins nano finesse ones, those are amazing jerk bait hooks. They're expensive, but man, they are awesome. Yeah. Well, you don't lose a lot of jerk bait, so that's good for the most part. No, no, unless you're like weighing them down and throwing them at Lake of the Ozarks for brush piles. Right. <laughs> so I got another question. What what part of the reel fails most often? Is there a certain you know, is there a commonality between all reels that something you got to watch out for? Oh uh, man, Bass Pro reels. You will. Oops. Let me see if I got one. This is gonna be a die with Steve's. Um, like the Bass Pro reels, your worm gear, your Paul here. There's like a piece of metal that goes on the worm gear and moves your your line guide side to side. Those tend to fail a lot on Bass Pro like pro qualifiers and I've seen them run on lose and the quantums and the quantums. Yep. I've had, I've had three quantums that all did the exact same thing with that worm gear. Yeah. They either stick to the side yep. or they break mm -hmm. the actual piece of metal. Paul will just snap off. I don't know why, because there's no real pressure being put on them. It's just literally just moving side to side in the channel. Those I, the only thing I could possibly think of is, you know, we were talking about the witch's hair a while ago and some other stuff. And when you get that real high pollen, when it's sitting on top of the water and it starts to get that buildup on there, right? I think it's coming off your line and the, that worm gear just keeps, you know, making it go one side or the other and builds up. And when it builds up enough on that side, that worm gear goes to go over and it gets stuck there. And then all of a sudden you shear that little piece of metal off. Yeah. It's, it's just my guess, but yeah, I mean, I've seen it where it builds up on each side of the worm gear. Um, I had a reel yesterday that was disgusting. I mean, it was it was built up pretty thick on each side. Uh, but again, just taking like a Q-tip and just wiping around, quick, you know, a couple minutes, and you're you're good to go. Right. But yeah, that's that's typically what I see. Um, really, other than that, reels are pretty solid nowadays. I mean, Lose makes a good reel. Daiwa Shimano. Um, you know, I mean, there's other lesser quality reels out there, and of course, you know what you pay is what you get kind of deal. Um, yeah. They're still going to last. But a lot of guys just don't care. They just don't pay 40 bucks for the reel, use it for the season and throw them away. Hmm. 25 bucks for a reel. I mean, I've had those. Mike, Mike got me, Mark, Mar Mike Marfo got me started on that loose stuff about yeah. 12 years ago. And I've got some of the, the tournament pros, the original ones. And man, they're still, they're yeah. still just cooking along. I'm, yeah. I mean, that was a, that was a good solid reel. I got my money's worth out of that. And yeah, yeah, we make a good reel. Um, yeah. It's funny because everybody thinks they're made in St. Louis or in Springfield. Springfield, they're oh, Korean, aren't they? Or they are. Yeah, you know, they're not made here. They're just that's the big thing, you know, the the big display or whatever it is. Is there an American-made reel? Uh, not anymore. There, there used to be a company called US Reel. They were actually made right here in Creekcore. They went out of business real quick. And then Ardent used to be made in the U.S. as well. And then, of course, their prices skyrocketed on manufacturing because they're made here. And so they had to go over to China and get their reels made over there. And it, it suffered. I mean, their quality just went down the tubes. So, Yeah, I, I, that's the one I was going to say as far as um, yeah. uh, American manufactured reel was Ardent. I knew they were doing that for a while. Yep. Yeah, they're doing it for like three or four years maybe. And then uh, they figured out, like, we got to get our margins up a little higher. So you yeah. just can do it here. Yeah, that's just part of it. That's the game. You can't do it. If everybody else is doing it over there and you're trying to do it here and it's a lot more expensive. You just, yeah, I mean, guys think, like, some of the Shimano and Daiwa stuff's expensive. I'm like, man, just think if that stuff was manufactured in the U.S. I'm like, you're a $1,000 reel, $1,200, $1,500 reel. Right. For what you can get over, you know, from Japan or Thailand or whatever for 600 bucks or 300 bucks, whatever it is. Yeah, I might I might have to get a hold of you later on the uh, Shimano the Crotal K. I'm cleaning that thing. Are you? That's a. I don't even know if I've even had that thing open yet. But is it just dirty or is it messed up or? No, it nothing. I just, yeah. just for maintenance wise. Yeah, I haven't even messed with it yet. So I know it's got the micro module gearing in there, so I'm sure it's set up a little bit different from what I'm used to. Yeah, I mean it's. I mean the the micro gears are just like tiny teeth. That's about it. That's the only difference. Yeah, they're just small teeth. Small teeth in the main gear and the, the pinion gear, but everything else is the same. Karate is pretty solid reels. 
Gotcha. So um, I want to I want to ask you a couple questions about uh, bait painting, like custom bait painting. Yeah. What's uh, say you get a you get a blank. What's the first process before you know? Like how do you how do you start to get to the from the start to the finish? You know, on a custom bait. Uh, so I've got. So typically, I get a blank in. This one I actually had to assemble. I had to put the uh, the lip in, so I had to kind of, I don't know, I had to glue it in. I had to epoxy the, the lip in to make sure it was straight and okay. centered. This one's already pre-prepped, so I don't have to do much prep work to it before I, I lay a base coat or do any kind of first painting to it. Um, if you want a ghost, it's ready to go. If you want an opaque color, then I usually do like a primer white or primer black, depending on what colors you're wanting. Um, and then go from there. I just do all base colors. Like if you want shads, it's usually like four or five colors. If you want bluegills, it's like eight, 10, 12, depending on the, the bluegill patterns you want. And then I do clear coats, clear coats, and then assemble. And you just let it dry for how long? Yeah, I let them cure uh, really longer, the better. Three days is, is the best. I use a two part. Um, clear, but you can use a lot of guys who use two ton epoxy. They will use um, this diamond clear. It's like this hard coating. You can just dip it and hang and dip it and hang. Okay. Pretty, pretty cool process. A lot of guys are using UV stuff where you can spray it and all that kind of stuff. But mine, I can just brush it on and spin it and it's good to go. Here's a question for you, which I couldn't tell you anything about them. But. Um, message me <laughs> if, if you have a budget that's what i ask guys i don't if they ask me about this reel this reel this reel i'm just like what do you want to spend do you want to spend 50 bucks do you want to spend a hundred dollars what i usually tell them is wait an extra week or an extra paycheck and get a reel that's a little bit higher end than what you're looking at currently and you'll thank me later because it's going to last you a lot longer can have less issues with casting and breaking and all this kind of stuff. You know, there's a lot of castings out there for 120 bucks, and you can buy an awesome Daiwa, you can buy an awesome Shimano, and an awesome Luz for that same price, but you're going to get a much nicer reel. Mm -hmm. That's a valuable life lesson right there. With just that applies to just about anything in life. If you yeah. if you've got the money and you're not sure about it, just wait and save up just a little bit more and get something that you're sure about. Especially yeah. fishing stuff. I mean, you're not saving up like 20 extra grand, you know, right. A couple bucks here and there. And in the long run, you're going to, you're going to enjoy fishing as a sport and not have to worry about something failing or something going wrong. So, um, back to the bait, the custom bait painting. Um, are there certain shapes that are trickier to paint or is it all pretty much, you know, the same thing? I think the hardest base to paint are the uh, multi-jointed big swim baits because you got to, I mean, the, with the joints and everything, um, trying to keep them separated and not having the, the joints connect to each other while you're painting or flipping them over and doing all this kind of stuff. Uh, I love painting crankbaits and topwaters, and, of course, the wake baits are awesome. But, yeah, those swim baits can be a pain. Yeah, I bet. I, I, I mean, they can, they can take a long time because you're using so much more paint. Yeah. Talking like like an S wave or something like that, jointed. Yeah, S wave or a bull shad. I paint a lot of the bull shads once. Like, oh, yeah, pencil. Like this guy right here. Yeah, that could be a pain in the butt. Oh gosh. So will you tape that off? Will you tape the sections of it off and just do one section at a so time? I will tape off just the uh, the tail because he's got a uh, like horsehair tail. So I'll tape off the tail and then everything else I just kind of have to to keep them keep it straight. So I've got clamps and everything that connect and I keep everything straight so I can rotate the entire bait without it flipping around. Hmm. Yeah. Then I'll, then I'll put the eyes in after I'm done and, and clear coat it. Yeah. Isaac on here, what's one of the known average time it takes you to paint a lure? Oh man, a couple minutes maybe. I mean I've, I've it's second nature to me. Yeah. You know, the easiest part is like if, if I do an orphan tackle warehouse and they want 25 frogs, black blues and all that kind of stuff, I just do 20 black blues, 20 frogs, you know, and I can knock them out pretty quickly. 
But when I get personal orders of like, hey, I want this custom color, this custom, this custom, it's a little te more tedious because I have to change colors on my on my airbrush. So instead of just using straight black, straight blue, I have to go pearls, orange, yellow, green, blue, whatever, clean it out, and then go to, to you know completely different colors. Do you, you got a do you got a couple colors that you really really like that you could show us? Um, Even if you have to walk away, that's fine. Because you're pretty quick. You were you grabbed that. Uh, yeah, I'm in, I'm right now. So I've got my reels over here, and I've got baits somewhere. Yeah, I got it. Uh, so you got any more questions up there? Uh, I seen Mike. Looks like Mike's giving. Oh, oh, just leave that up there for him. He can read that when he wants. <laughs> I think he's giving up some of his uh some secret spots, little yeah, honey hole. That's there. what it looks like. Who oh, Mike is? Yeah, he says uh, right under the Alton Bridge or up a uh, Piazza Creek or Pierre Marquette to fish the Illinois portion of the pool. Yeah, yeah. I haven't been on the river. I haven't been on the river. Ooh, it's probably I haven't been on the river this year. It's just been a weird year. I sold the boat unexpectedly during COVID, which sucked. I mean, it's great, but <laughs> who, who would have thought you'd sell a boat during COVID? But hey, yeah, no doubt. Gary, what, what kind of paint you use? Oh man, I use a lot of different kinds. I mean, there's like Createx paints and acrylics and wildlife colors and house of color and auto sprays and all. I mean, there's yeah, not all the paints are created the same. There's you know thinner paints and there's multicolor chameleon changing color paints and I mean there's some paints that are like three hundred bucks a quart. So, yeah, it's really nice paint, but it's the only paint that will flip flops and changes color and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, I, yeah, that's nice. So this is just my signature white bait color. Um, it's actually got my logo on top. You can kind of see it. Yeah, yeah. So signature gill color. It's a it's a ghost gill. Um, it, it, you know, bluegill or shad color, it kind of looks like both. So you can use it, you know, any kind of forage. Yeah. I like that. That's nice. I like that stuff. That's a little bit translucent. Yeah. Yeah. You got, I mean, you guys got some clear water over there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We've got clear water here spring in the fall when it starts cooling down. Um, you know, I've got, this is an opaque, harder to see. It's a shad color. So it's got like coppers and, and, blacks and blues with a little bit of pink belly on it kind of like yeah. a copy, copy pattern. those are popular colors you know i'm doing like crazy requests for like water moccasins and stuff like crazy mm -hmm. snake colors and snakehead yeah snakehead colors i don't know just weird you know coppers and browns and blacks and all that kind of stuff but my summer gill is a popular color um, my frog, black and blues, because black and blues is like the most popular color. So, gotcha. Yeah, I know we were talking about you know reels a while ago, and I I seen tackle junkie brought up on here, and I I I agree with him quite a bit on this. That pro qualifier from Bass Pro, awesome fifty dollar reel. That is that's probably one of the best reels you're gonna buy out there at fifty bucks. Yeah. I mean, they're a good solid reel. You just don't have many problems with them. No. Um, and they, I know they were even talking about them, you know, buy one, get one free, which I think they run that just about every year. So, yeah. Yeah. You, see, you do like the real trade and you get like 40 bucks or 50 bucks off. And yeah, it's a great reel. I see a ton of them. I see a ton of lose. Yeah. I was, but yeah, a lot of pro qualifiers. Yeah. There's a good question for you there from Whitewell. Um, man, I don't actually know. Um, I don't, I don't watch any, uh, be honest. I don't watch a lot of, uh, fishing YouTube and I don't watch a lot of airbrushing YouTubes. I do a lot of car YouTubes. Um, there's, I guess there's, uh, it's like, it's not swim bait underground. It's, it's something underground. It's like uh, airbrush underground, something like that. There's a big forum on like custom baits, custom pouring jigs, airbrushing, um, all that kind of stuff to do like DIY, making your own baits, lure parts online. That's a good supplier for a ton of, ton of product. 
you can, uh, I got a new business adventure for you. You can make your own little starter kit and you can just film yourself, you know, painting some baits right. and put it on a VHS tape and then you can ship it with the starter kit. Be like, oh, that's cool. Super eight or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, Who's got a VCR to put that? I don't in? know, man. Yeah. I'll say Morrison, Morrison Sun Custom Baits said Tackle Underground. Yeah, Tackle Underground. You want to check them out there, White Well. Yeah. Uh, Swim Bait Underground and Tackle Underground. Yeah, Mike, Mike put this one up here. Tell them the secret to get the scale look on your paint jobs. I'm good. I, I had a feeling yeah. that was something. A little insider secret. Yeah. I was going to ask that, but I, I knew better. Yeah. I knew yeah, better. I, I make a lot of stencils. Um, I. I get stencils made with like uh, vacuum forms. So I take baits, get them vacuum formed to plastic and then cut and design your own stencils. There's a lot of stencils out there that everybody uses. Um, so the, the, the look looks exactly the same from guy over here and guy over here. So I will vacuum form. I'll take the bait and do the vacuum form on it and I'll just start drawing uh, my own kind of stencil on it and cut it out. That's cool. Yeah. That's really cool. I mean, the whole thing's cool. I, you know, I, I love it. I, mean, I paint baits and work on reels and fish. <laughs> it's the life, man. It's the life. You got any tournaments coming up? Oh, uh, I, I don't know if I got one up in Wisconsin again. Um, not really. I think I'm. I've been taking it easy on tournaments for the last two years. I kind of. I don't know if I just got burnt out. Um, I fished a lot. I mean, I fished a tournament every weekend and I'd fish like Tuesday nighters and just, yeah, I did a lot. And I just kind of just had to slow down with the business growing and doing stuff for Omega and just traveling, just kind of took a break from the, the tournaments just because I couldn't commit to my like non boater or partner to say, Hey, do you want to fish anglers in action? Do you want to fish these nine, nine tournaments? And I was just like, man, I can't make three or four of these. So. Yeah, it's kind of got hard. I, I feel you, man. I know what you mean. I like I was mentioning those Wednesday nighters. I was doing those every week for like eight weeks in a row, and it got to the last couple ones, and I'm just kind of like burnt out. You know, yeah. it's 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 fun, but it, it can get too repetitive. I'm and say not eight weeks in a row. If yeah, spread well, out a little bit wouldn't be so bad. Well, they would have been, but you know, this like sickness that swept the nation kind of yeah. pushed everything back and yeah. crashed down. Yeah, it's been great. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> so you were talking about uh, anglers in action. Um, what do you think about the MPFL? Because uh, Big Big Al's involved in that, isn't he? Big Al and the owner of Omega, and then uh, the uh, the who is it? The manager of Cash and Rods, uh, okay. Paul Benson. Um, I hope it does well. I mean, when I first heard about it, I was kind of shocked. It kind of came out of nowhere. When Brad and Michelle texted me in the morning, we're like, hey, we're starting a new professional fishing league. And I was like, what? Why? You know, you've got four others, five others that are stout. I mean, Bassmasters, FLW, Bass Pro Tour, MLF. Huge. Yeah. Um, but from talking and just seeing what direction they want to go into, um, it's, it's going to be a little bit different and offer a little bit different perspective on the tournaments. You're going to get a lot of new blood who don't necessarily want to spend a much more money than what you're spending to fish the elites or, you know, FLW. Um, it's still, it's still a lot. It's two year, $30,000 a year. Um, so financially that's a, that's a lot. And people are like, well, why aren't you going to go fish it? I'm like, I don't want to know. <laughs> like I, I know guys that fish for a living and I know guys that have lived off multiple credit cards to, mm. you know, finance and fund just to go fishing. And it's crazy to see, you know, guys spending $80,000 a year to make 20 grand a year. And for me, it's just not viable. Like as a, as a, business long-term plan insurance you know all this retirement all this kind of stuff yeah uh, it, it's just crazy you know there's those guys that do it brandon and ish and all these guys you know ike and kvd and g-man and there's guys that make a phenomenal living at it on the water and off the water so 
I think with this NPFL, they're going to showcase 110 guys. Um, they're going to do a lot of live streaming. So that's cool. You're going to do, I think, 13 cameras. Um, to get, you know, just to get that name out there. It's kind of going to be kind of like our head to head where you got all this coverage and you're getting all this exposure, um, you know, with a little reward or a little risk, you know, you're not spending crazy amount of money. So, yep. I'll say, it's, it's gonna be, I hope it, you know, takes off. Um, it starts next year, next March. So, um, it'll be cool. They just signed on Fat Cat Newton and uh, Luke Duncan. So yeah, I was just getting ready to bring that up. That's gonna be I mean, uh, if the bad, at least the comedy will be good. That's gonna be nice. Yeah. yeah, those guys are awesome. They're uh, I've known Fat Cat for six or seven years. He is outside of his like crazy persona YouTube guy. He is down to earth, blue collar, hardworking guy. So yeah, he can actually be pretty calm. I heard it. I heard it. I can't remember what show he was on. It was one of the podcasts, one of the bigger ones, but he was a guest on there. And he was, he, he was just like you said, he was down to earth and it yeah. was a different side of him. And I, I really appreciated hearing that podcast because, you know, when, when people are on the stage, they're one way, but when you sit down and talk to them, a lot of some, right. sometimes they're completely different. They're pretty much normal, just like you and me. Yeah. Yeah. He was on, I think I clogged yesterday and they did the whole announcement and everything. And, uh, it's it's tough because guy you know like he does his big shtick and all this stuff and man seeing him out in like the the Bassmaster Classic and he's done some of the weigh-ins for the Real Men Foundation guys expect him to be on point all the time and I'm just like God it's got to be exhausting man like you guys do like one liners and you know and you're you're no I mean no he's small time compared to like a comedian you know yeah. like a famous comedian and all these people expect you to be on point all the time. It's just, well, he's won 10 Bassmaster classics though. So he yeah, is 1985. Yeah. <laughs> on an honest it's like Gerald Swindle. I mean, Gerald Swindle is the same way, you know, people expect him to be witty and fast. And, you know, a lot of times he probably just wants to be quiet, especially after having a, a tough day out on the water, you come in and people are expecting you to be this person and, you probably just want to like go straight to your truck and drive yeah, away. You, you, can't. Have, you know, have some dinner and all that stuff, but yeah, it should be a good time. I mean, he's going to be there for entertainment plus knowledge. I mean, he knows the industry. He's been with Cashin for God, he's been passion for eight years or something. So he knows the industry. And so he's got that knowledge. So it, it'll be a good balance. And Luke Duncan knows his stuff. So. Yeah. Right. I think I, one of the things I like the most about, um, the uh, MPFL is that they're going to fish three days and everybody gets to fish those three days. Yeah, I mean, all 120 anglers or something, three days, which is, man, they better fish some big lakes because it's going to get very tight. Yeah, no uh, kidding. You better not boy duck at it and he'll be on you real quick. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no comment. Just three yeah. days, I mean, if you cut it down from 125, they usually fish two days. So they cut it down to 50, typically. I mean, that you know. And then from there you go to top ten guys. So mm -hmm. you're going from 125 to ten or whatever it is. Right. So especially on like a ledge lake, you know, you got you got yeah. a full fish in a ledge lake, say a uh, big wicked Pretty chicken nice. or something, and then it drops down and then it drops down again. You start getting to be able where you can run around and fish different ledges. Yeah. Um, but when the full field's out there, you better pull up and you're probably gonna have to camp out. You're you're gonna be fishing behind somebody all day long. Yeah, I mean it's guys' advantages and it's disadvantages. I mean, let's be honest. If you're in 125th place on day two and you're going into day three fishing, like you're kind of just mentally checked out. Yeah. You no, know, I mean, you might be able to scrounge a decent limit and come back um, and make up some points, but man, that'd be tough. Three days of just getting your butt kicked. And yeah, you're hoping to get that last check, you know? Yeah. You know, I think they're paying 50 guys or something. So, yeah, it's going to be interesting. I'm really looking forward to seeing it. Um, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of names that nobody has a clue about. So, right, and yeah, they're good no. fishermen. We just don't know yeah. who they are yet. That's that's yeah. you know that's what happened with uh, the Bassmasters. You know, all, everybody left. All the top name pros, um, the yeah. household names left and went to MLF. Um, and it's just a new 
solid rotation of sticks that moved in behind them. And you're slowly yeah. starting to know the new names and you realize that, you know, you're seeing the same kind of weights on these lakes. So um, these guys are catching them just like the, the house brand names were catching them too. So they're no schlubs. I mean, they're it's like, look at Jacob Wheeler, how quick he, can. well, Jacob Wheeler's been, you know, I mean, he's been here about him until a couple of years ago. And also yeah. he just blew up. And yeah. he started out fishing everybody. But there's like Ron Nelson, and there's uh, Garrett Paquette, there's uh, there's just a ton of these younger guys that you don't really know, and all of a sudden they're just in there doing what they're supposed to be doing. And yeah, you've got stuff. like John Cox, who is destroying it this year. Um, yeah. But then you have what was it uh, Jamie Hartman? Mm-hmm. Who was that guy? And then the last two, three years, that guy's been on fire. So. You know, you've got the new guys coming in and that have always been good. NPFL is going to have regional guys that have been really good, you know. So now they can try and showcase their national uh, national talent and see if they can hang. Yeah, I think it's going to be great. Somebody had a question about a uh, top three. Uh, what are the top three colors recommended for your wake baits? Summer Gill, Gizzard Shad, and maybe Frog. Is that the black one? Uh, no. no, frog is like a uh, looks like a bullfrog. It's like an old school bullfrog color. It's got like the moss green full bo- you know full body with a little bit of yellow underneath with the uh, yellow and black spots. Okay, um, but those are my three. Like Tackle Warehouse sells my four most popular colors, and okay. then you can just go to my website and there's like twenty other colors that are awesome colors. It's just custom colors. Um, Isaac's asking, did they, did the NPFL sign any of the bigger names? I heard, um, a while back that Pete Galusic was going to be involved. I don't know if they got that pinned down or not. He was, and I think he pulled out of it. Okay. I yeah. Cause, cause the, he didn't mention it today on Ike live. I was listening to it. Yeah. Okay. I know. I don't know what the deal is. Maybe it was just constraints with family and time and, you know, who knows? Um, he's so busy with, you know, opens and doing all this kind of stuff. Um, but big, big names, not that I've heard of yet. Mm-hmm. Um, I think they've got 75 guys locked up, and I think they're waiting for the other guys to finalize contracts. Yeah, and that's and there's going to be a shift. Um, you know, like you said, uh, the MLF guys, they're on a two-year – it was a three-year contract. They'll be done next year. What's that? I think their contracts are up next year. So Right. So there could be some guys making their way over to this other organization. Most, you know, it's, it's highly possible. Yeah. So then you could see back to his question. Um, you could see some big names. Yeah. Up. That'd be interesting. I mean, God help him. If Jacob Wheeler decides to come in, <laughs> that's going to win everything. <laughs> yeah. That, so say more than some, what do know? What you guys thought about the elite fishermen being able to fish the actual MLF? Oh, like uh you mean that the FL yeah. ML edition, the FLW tour right. yeah he's giving uh, big, thumbs, big down. thumbs down I'm I, I mean those guys paid the, those FLW guys paid their entry fees the first of the year yep. and they were told what's going to happen and then mid year they said oh we're going to let BPD guys jump in and pay an entry fee and and now they can go fish your tournaments and it's not cool to be honest with you. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I mean, there's a lot of checks that were lost to people that had been fishing the tour for the whole year. I mean, they didn't lose out on points, which is good. Yeah. But, I mean, I'm sure there were some guys, some tour guys that pulled up in an area and there was a BPT guys sitting on their spots. You know, they would have got that area if those guys weren't in the tournament, most likely. You know, yeah. I mean, they, they upped the, the pay person, all that kind of stuff. But, man, when you – when you sign a contract and you you're you're mentally focused for 10 tournaments against the same 120 person field and then you get flipped on saying hey we're going to add another 30 guys and it's these are the 30 guys you know and then it's kind of like what like you know i don't know it's just crazy yeah. i i know there's a, i know there's a lot of FLW guys who are not very happy with it mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't blame them. I don't either. I don't either one bit. It's uh, I, I mean, I, I understand the part where, you know, because of this uh, 
virus thing. These guys needed money and they haven't fished tournaments. But, you know, like you said, the uh, the tour guys signed up for the schedule at the beginning of the year. And, you know, I think they should have just stuck with that. But yeah. it is what it is. Yeah, I mean, we'll see what happens next year. I mean, man, there could be a mass exodus of people. I mean, you look at Brandon and Gerald spent 50 grand to get out of it. I mean, that that's a chunk of change to get out of something that it's fishing and you're paying 50 grand to get out of it. So yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. Mike said, Pete, uh, Pete has a bash U schedule out. So yeah. he may have had a conflictions with uh, bash university. Yeah. Yeah. He's so busy with that stuff running bass U. Yeah. yeah. Mike said not 30 scrubs, 30 sticks added. Yeah. <laughs> So we got any more questions for Trey? We've been on been on here. Well, for, I had uh, like I had like six of them here, but everybody just went through them. Like a, <laughs> that's good. With the first ten minutes there, so pretty much got all them answered. Um, I think the only one other, maybe the only other one I had was. Uh, I was going to ask you if you had a favorite lake, but I already know it's somewhere up north. Just based uh, on. man, I don't. Mm, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> There's so many lakes. Yeah, I've heard so many lakes that I love Kentucky Lake. As bad as it is, I absolutely love that lake. Um, you just don't get the crazies out there. You know, like Lake of the Ozarks is insane. Yeah. Oh, lake of the Ozarks is a great lake fishing-wise. But, man, you got a ton of boats out there. It's very like, dangerous. Kentucky Lake South, man, you, you can go down south and you won't see a pleasure boater for weeks, even during the holidays. It's awesome. I, I got a story for you about Lake of the Ozarks. I was with Mike one time and – we were coming out of, we were just coming out of one of those big coves and um, this, this big roller, this rogue wave just from nowhere, you know, it's kind of like you come out and there's no boats anywhere. Right. And then all of a sudden this wave just comes upon you and it's a, you know, it's a five foot swell or something. Oh, it's bad. Yeah. And we, and we got, we got airborne, you know, and you, you come down and hit the bottom, you know, you hit the bottom of that wave and, you know, you check all your fillings and stuff and you just kind of, try to relax. So that, that lake is, it makes me nervous too. It's like, you always got to be on your toes. You got to be paying attention because there's so many, so much boat traffic and yeah. people zipping well, and zagging. And How do you think them guys are going to fish the big bass bash or going to feel with them boat races going? Well, on? I heard they, uh, well, you may, you may know this, they're having that boat race, but I yeah. think they got that pushed back or something on one of the days. They moved. So Friday is like the full day. I think it starts at like noon or something. Saturday, they pushed it back to like 3 or 3.15 um, for the boat race because it was between like the dam and the nine-mile marker, which pretty much eliminates Alhana, um, Point Randall Resort way in, and then going up in the gravel way. Okay. So that was supposed to be all no wake. So I think they moved it back. Um, but what people don't realize is even if it starts at 3 o'clock, you're still going to have 25,000 pleasure boaters getting to that area at noon or whatever, they're going to go hang out and watch this boat race. Um, it's, it's going to be interesting. I hope everybody just slows down because it's been, the lake's been taking too many people the last like three or four weeks. Yeah. It's, it's horrible. Yeah. Uh, Isaac had a good question. He said, uh, what do you paint for Omega? He saw a couple of special or a special release for the vibrating jigs. Is that your work? Um, so I paint, I paint the Raptures. I think there's four or five colors in the Raptures, which is the bladed jig. I also paint the uh, the spinnerbaits, the Genesis TIs. And I used to paint the swimbait heads. But we okay. switched the swimbait heads over to our manufacturing facility. Stan's got a question there, too, at the bottom. Yeah, is the Mega Bass Destroy P5 X Bites the real deal? Which one? Put uh, that up there. Oh, the bottom one? Yep. Uh, what is that? I don't know. <laughs> is, that, is that a rod? I have a feeling it might be a rod. Destroyer, Mega Bass Destroyer, yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know. That's a, The Mega Bass stuff is out of my price range for the most part. But Yeah, uh, some, man, they make some beautiful baits. Yeah. They make some cool stuff, man, the, the R&D that goes behind these. Like Dual Realis and Mega Bass and all stuff is is pretty phenomenal. Well, you were talking about that real expensive paint, and as soon as you said that, that's exactly what I was thinking about. You know, I was thinking about the the Vision One Tens. A lot of the yeah. colors on them they they change with the way you rotate. Yeah, so I, 
I still Ooh. don't know. That. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it didn't get to like a thousand bucks a pint. I mean, it's really expensive. So. And that's why, I mean, between the, the paint, the R&D, and the patents that they had to create for the Vision 110, that's why it cost 25 bucks. Mm -hmm. They work, though. There's something about them. Awesome baits. Yeah. Got Steve in here. All right, guys, unless you got any more questions for Trey, we're going to let him go. Man, it was, it was, uh, it was really nice to meet you, man. Heard yeah, you your name. Yeah. Mike's mentioned you before, and um, it's good to meet you. And um, Good luck down the road. I hope business stays steady for you. Yeah, I'm hoping it's, uh, you know, COVID's been crazy. It's weird. I, th I figured it'd be slow, but, man, boat here yeah. sold like 70 boats this summer, so it's weird. I know it's been weird out in the water. Um, we, we've talked about it on the streams over and over about just the amount of fishermen that, People. yeah, it's un unbelievable. People. You know, fishing license sales are through the roof and you can't even hardly buy any tackle when yeah. you're going, going to like Academy and even Bash Pro Shops and stuff. It's like the shelves are almost cleaned out, a lot of stuff. Yeah. I, I mean, everybody's outside. When they first told us, like, you must social distance, but you can go outside and go hike or park, whatever. I mean, there's so many people that have never boated or biked or camped yeah. or anything. Well, and then they gave you your fishing license for free for what two months there or ninety days or something. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. I'm. Well, Gabe and I talked about it before. You know, little local lake here. I mean, it was just absolutely crowded. You couldn't hardly get in there. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, I drove through one of them and just turned right back around and left. I mean, I couldn't even put my boat in. Yeah, it's crazy. I mean, I've. I think from March, since March, I've been on the road for about two months. So, and I've seen like different parts of the country. And I'm like, God, man, there are so many people. <laughs> yeah. Out, you know, out on lakes, you know, we went to St. Clair in May and we went up north two weeks ago up to Minnesota and just people out at the parks and stuff. It's, it's nuts. It's awesome to see people outside, but go back inside. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Well, I always look forward to the hunting season, you know, because people get out of the off the water and into the woods, and that kind of kind of lets the lakes breathe a little bit. Yeah, lets the lakes breathe. You got the lake to yourself, and then you always start hearing gunshots. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The duck hunters, you got to watch out for those duck hunters. You know, I was yeah. I was fishing cedar uh, two years ago. Like wow, wow, yeah, wow. About that. Yeah, I, I was fishing cedar. It's a, like it's a two thousand acre lake over in southern Illinois. I fish over there a lot. Nine nine lake or ten horsepower lake, and um, I was coming around the corner around this point, kind of slowing down because I was getting ready to scan it. It's a, just a long tapering point. Um, and I saw this, this whole group of ducks, you know, just sitting right there off that point. I'm right. Like, cool, man. Look at that. There's some ducks that are just sitting out doing their little duck things. And I was, I was grabbing, going to grab my handheld camera and I was going to kind of ease in there and just see how close I could get to them. And then I just got to thinking about it. I'm like, wait a minute. The name of that point is called Duck Line Point. And it's called duck blind point for a reason because those are decoys and I'm, you know, I'm easing idling in on somebody that's sitting up in the woods with two guns, you know? So I just, you're going to go film. Yeah. I turned, I, I just cranked down <laughs> and the hell out of there. <laughs> oh, I've, I've had lead rain on me when we're, we're up North. It's uh, it's pretty entertaining. Yeah. Keeps you on your toes. I got a video where guys were shooting. Uh, I was at Lake of the Ozarks jerk bait fishing. Me and Mike were down there for, uh, I can't remember what tournament it was. Actually, that was this year. I was going to stay. And, uh, yeah, we stayed at Greg's house, and there were some guys just popping off rounds right, right on the bank from me, you know. And that first round is the one that gets you. You don't oh. even go up there, you know. You're focusing, you're, you know, you're twitch, twitch, counting the six, twitch, twitch, counting the second, you know, to count the six, and then all of a sudden, pow, 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 and, you know, makes you makes you hit the deck. So yeah, it'll it'll wake you up. Fun times. So all right, man. We will talk to you later, Trey. Appreciate you. Have a good evening. Appreciate it, guys. Have a good one, guys. All right, man. See you, man. We did that Midwest. We always do that Midwestern goodbye. You ever notice that? It's like you uh, you say goodbye, and then you I talk a little bit man, more, and then you say goodbye, yeah. and then you talk a little bit more. That, there really is something to that. It's it's funny. I mean, you don't you try to get away from the stereotype, but it's just the way it I is. Just roll with the bunches. You know, city care. folks, man, they're like, all right, I'm out. And they're gone. Yeah. That's it. That's all you get. It's over. Um, but we get the nice – you know, like 15 minute outro. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's kind of nice. Just drags on. So, yeah. Well, man, that was, that was cool, man. Uh, a lot of knowledge. Yeah. Stephanie, just to answer your question, I know Bass Guy down here kind of answered you too. Um, 
I don't know if you've seen my comment a while ago, but I actually, I have everything linked down in the description of this video. Um, it has <laughs> Trey's Instagram, his Facebook page, his website, um, everything in there. So you can go look up any of his baits that take you right to it and everything. I see Gary up there. Go Blues. We didn't get into the hockey, Gary. Yeah. We're going we're gonna to get into hockey. just didn't work. Yeah, Johnson Creek was a nightmare, Billy. I I, uh, whew, I went there a couple times, and there was – you couldn't even find a parking place. I mean, people were parked up in the grass. You know, obviously, everything on the blacktop was covered up. It was it was something else. What were you talking about? Uh, Kincaid. Kincaid yeah. You know, when they had the other end closed, the marina? Yeah, yeah that was – there was – gee, there were 70, 80, 90 boats – in that little area. Yep. So. Yeah, that is because we don't want to stop talking fishing. That's right, Mike. That's right. It happens. You got anything else on there we need to address or? Uh, I don't really get anything major coming up or anything going on big. Uh, well, um, we just got that Toyota owners tournament. Well, you know what? Let's talk about um, some of the guests that we got coming up. I got a couple things lined up. Um, we're going to have next week. We're not going to be on here because it's Labor Day. Right. So. We're gonna we're gonna take that week off, and then after that we've got a uh, Hella Bass, who is a YouTuber from up north, from Minnesota area, and he just finished fourth in the Bass Nation tournament. So shout out to Hella Bass, man, that's pretty impressive. But we're gonna have him on there. He's um, he does a live stream as well, and we're just gonna talk about you know fishing up north and try to compare. What happens in the fall up north versus what happens down here in the central yes. part of the United States? So they should be hitting it pretty dang close here. Yeah, yeah. He he's probably yeah. He's probably I would say he should be in the first. They they he's probably first couple weeks. Yeah, because it gets yeah. cover a lot sooner up there. So yeah. they're probably on that fall bite right now. Yeah, up there. Yeah, but we'll have him on there uh, on here, and then we're also going to have a Cumberland Pro giveaway. Um, Isaac was nice enough to send us some goodies. So we're going to be doing that sometime in the next month. And we'll announce that on both of our channels. Um, we'll do it on the live stream. We'll probably do something to where we come up with maybe a question or something. I'm thinking. Yeah. Do oh, something. All yeah. right. Yeah. We'll think, of, we'll think of a way to do it, but it's going to be nice. You guys are, you guys are definitely going to want to check that out. We're going to have Bass Geek on here coming up pretty soon. Um, I'm going to try to get Christian from Yellow Tech on here. And my man Mike's gonna get back on here soon. We're gonna try to we're gonna try to keep him on a monthly rotation because he's just a big ball of fun. Got yeah. lots of stories, and we just barely scratch the surface on him. He's got all kinds of little trails and avenues that he can uh, he can tell you about. So, you should so going to work on Marcus for you guys. Yeah, that man, that tomorrow. that would be sweet, man. Yep. That would be sweet. Definitely got to keep it rolling. So going into the winter months, um, having you know. Not just okay guests, but having good guests um, like yourself, Mike, that helps out a lot. Um, having Trey on here, Hella Bass, I mean, that's going to be pretty interesting. So, have a lot to talk about, some good topics to go over. So, yeah, just trying to get some good guests from different parts of the country, different uh, different parts of the industry, just kind of mix it up. Um, I see. Uh, Sean said he loves tackle giveaways. Yeah. Okay, yeah. you're out already. <laughs> <laughs> They're fun. You know, you get to check out a. Uh, just different stuff. Yeah. You might find your favorite jig. I, I think you guys will find a favorite jig once you try these out. They're they're pretty nice. I uh, caught a couple of nice ones on them this weekend. So. Yeah. I know one, one thing I want to talk about too, this December, before we hit January, I want to hit that thousand mark on the subscribers. So you guys keep sharing our stuff. We greatly appreciate that. It helped out a lot. So. You see this? It's only one spinner rate for the giveaway. Gabe kept the rest. Oh, man. No, I'm going to give it away. We're going to have a nice little giveaway. DJ, uh, for, can you delete that comment? Um, can you delete DJ Hall's comment there? We tried. We, wait, got, wait. we got through the whole show. I can't show. see it. Can't see, we got through the say? whole show. You know Did what? the pink t shirt yeah, video drop? I don't, even, I don't know what you're talking about. I, I haven't seen it. We've made it through two shows without that coming up. And here he is, <laughs> right at the very end. Well, if you remember, then he was taking a break on us. He was he was pretty busy with home life. So right. I'm glad to have him back though. Yeah, no kidding. Fishing with Fitz is doing a giveaway, so go over there and check that out. Yep. Gary's got some Stanley jigs. Yeah, Sean. I hear you, Sean. Blah 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 blah. <laughs> so, all right. I guess that's it. As far as uh, you asked what I got coming up, the the Toyota tournament, yep. Toyota owners tournament, me and Mike Marfell are going down there. Um, I think it's the second 
week in September? September. 13, 12, 13, something 12, like yeah, that. 12, there? Yeah, because the 12th, I've got a tournament at Clear. So. Okay. So we'll be doing that. And then the following weekend, we'll be doing the Super Tournament, the BFL Super Tournament on Lake of the Ozarks. Um, Mike's fishing as a boater, and I'll be fishing as a co-angler in that. Not together, but uh, we linked up, so we, we're guaranteed a spot in that tournament. Of course, yeah. we got to pay for that, Mike. I haven't paid for it yet. But I thought Mike said he was paying for everything. Oh, yeah, that's right. We'll talk about that on the road trip down there. We'll yeah, have plenty of time to hash uh, that out. So you got a tournament coming up? Too? Yeah. So i got a tournament down at Clearwater the 12th. That's actually my last tournament of the year. Um, then we'll have our Classic. So hopefully I do it right there so I can move on to the Classic, which will be down at Lake of the Ozarks the – see october 13th or 14th something like that i don't know what dates are october something it's the middle it's like a week or two after the big bass bash so that's going to be that'll be probably a top water thing down there maybe yeah it'll be some tough it'll be tough conditions, tough conditions i'm sure you know them getting beat up the week before plus the boat races and everything else so i'm sure the the lake's going to be on edge but yeah yeah guys smash that thumbs up on both channels mm -hmm. wherever you're coming from um Fishing with Fitz, the pink shirt deal. If you want to know about that, go back. Uh, either one of our channels, we have a little fishing tournament we did. So just go check it out. It's probably what a month and a half ago. Yeah, yeah. it's a one-on-one -on -one tournament. We got two episodes piece on there. You can see yeah. how that all went down. Yeah, it's uh, well worth watching. Bass guy he says he's going to be on Kincaid in three weeks. Yeah, I went over there yesterday for a little while and caught a few fish. It was kind of tough, but um, those fish are still out deep from what I could see. Yeah, Bass Guy, and I didn't forget about you. I, remind me, send me another message. I'll uh, I'll show you them spots on the map. So, all right. I guess that's it. All righty. Thank you guys for coming. Yep. And, we'll uh, see you in two weeks. Two weeks. Two weeks, we'll see you. All right. Peace. See ya.